Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I want to talk about one topic and one topic only, which is the answer from the head developer of Gaijin for War Thunder, Vyacheslav Bulanikov. I hope I pronounced this right. If not, I'm sorry. Um, this is the best that I could make it. So it was the response to not just only the FPE and parts discussion, but also the RP income. Now, first a few things ahead. Yes, I'm really impressed to a certain degree and um, I was really anticipating a lot from this video when I saw that it was actually there. And I think a big thumbs up for Gaijin to bring a response like this. Also, it's very nice for us to, or at least for me, to see a face to, you know, the dev team. You know, you see kind of um, the CEO and his brother from time to time. But um, outside of this, I never think I saw a face of a Gaijin employee with the exception of one further. But that's, uh, that's a bit too far in the discussion. What I want to say is you see a face to the discussion and we got a response. We got a response that I, to be honest, on one side thought it would be inevitable that Gaijin is something doing after the massive backlash that Gaijin got from the community in one way or another on Reddit, on the forums within War Thunder and under their uh, YouTube videos in other, um, you know, video comment sections. There was a huge discussion going on. I myself am partially responsible for, um, for it as well. In conjunction with other content creators so I think um, I should actually respond to the respond in one way or another now a lot of things are my personal opinion other things are pure fact and I think now it's down to the community to test it out to check it out and many many people that have said in the comment section I will not return to War Thunder up until the point that um, you know something changes it's now the ball is now in their court they now have to actually return to War Thunder to check it out and actually you know um, follow up their awesome comments with action so it's now their kind of duty um, I might exaggerate here a little bit of course it's a game you're not bound to do anything um, but it would be nice to see actually um, a positive sign for Gaijin from the player base outside of words and um, I think the overall kind of response from Gaijin to go back to the video was a very fair compromise now I think let's begin with the parts and FPE. The big changes are that especially at higher tiers they will recalculate the costs of the RP and also the costs of researching a tank uh, in terms of research points. And also immediately after researching parts you then can immediately begin to research the fire prevention equipment. Now sadly this is a missed chance to give us a free charge or for the fire extinguisher and then give us three charges um, overall. Um, this is one of the solutions that um, I thought was very practical and very much um, you know on point as well as you know giving a longer repair time but Gaijin has addressed both parts in a way first of all you get faster to the FPE and also you then get faster to follow up modifications like uh, ammunition so this is um, you know something that you also must not forget um, it's it's an overall game. It's a big relief for the players, uh, especially for the free-to-play players, but also those who just want to spend enough gold on a tank to make it um, really valuable for fighting with it. That then brings us to the um, parts. Now, now light tanks and uh, special tanks like the British premium tank um, let me just quickly look it up. I'm sorry. It's the AVRE, the Centurion Mark V AVRE. They now can repair anybody on the battlefield, even though it has not a parts. And so they introduced 
what they call the um, request repair feature. So that actually now is um, advertising teamwork, which I am a big fan of. But then we have two problems, okay? And they are not, they are to a certain degree big problems, but they are not massive problems. First of all, only light tanks. I think that is now a problem for certain tech trees, namely tech trees, namely the British and the German tech tree, which have for between rank two and four, not a single light tank. And I think um, this is a big problem. So there, there are huge gaps in the battle rating spread and it makes certain tanks more valuable in endgame scenarios than others. But this has always been like this. The next thing is light tanks. Light tanks are very fragile and light tanks play normally, at least, you know, in books or, you know, in theory, you can say light tanks are you know the flankers that just spot that give support in one way or another um, by you know getting in a disabling shot by flanking the enemy team dropping artillery strikes capping zones and mostly staying hidden staying outside of the combat um, in the center of a map let's let's just you know roughly give this scenario um, you know a face and let's say um, Eastern Europe. Uh, you are on Eastern Europe in the city and the light tanks go to the other side of the river and they also then go through the woods or to the hill, whatever side you're fighting on. And um, when they are forced to actually go in to help a crippled tank, you know, because let's say the enemy threat is dealt with, a random artillery strike can and very often will not just damage but outright hull break a light tank and so the reward for you know this uh, teamwork should be significantly higher than it currently is now it's kind of a little bonus it's a nice gesture from one teammate to the other um, or a squad mate to the other but i think it should be a bit more Furthermore, I think this teamwork, this uh, request repair feature should be able to be answered not just by light tanks or the AVRE, but also SBAs. I think this is giving SBAs um, another reason to stay in the game. And I would highly, highly like this because SBAs are there throughout any nation. And I think that would be a quick solution to this kind of problem. Um, yeah, and then also they will, as I mentioned previously, rebalance the research costs of vehicles and modifications. So um, the reward system gets recalculated. And as they said, it's not just your own actions and the fact if you win or lose that you get more or less for that battle. I think this is completely understandable and obvious and I think this is how the gameplay should be rewarded. Previously, we had apparently a soft cap for RP. No matter how many tanks you killed, no matter, no matter how many caps you got, and uh, you know, whatever you did, you never really exceeded a certain amount of RP. Yes, it was different from tank to tank. Yes, it was significantly different if you used a premium account and a booster. But if you uh, get them out of this equation, there was always this feeling that it was not really worth playing a long battle and you know doing a lot of stuff but rather than just go in get a cap get two three quick kills die and then join the next battle not really caring about um what's going on with the match that you just left and if your team loses or not the damage that the income that you created in the first three four five minutes of a battle was much more uh, valuable uh in in over the course of like three battles then fighting a long battle over the course of the same time and i think that was always a massive drawback and something that i always didn't like in war thunder um i recently talked about this and now they want to change this so apparently they want to address this um not just with you know apparently removing the soft cap but also um, time spent fighting, um, how is that meant? In the video, uh, they want to change it, limited amounts of respawns. So 
it's not very precisely defined. Maybe it will work like within arcade that you have three uh, guaranteed respawns um, or that you have three spawns guaranteed overall um, and that you have kind of then to get rid of spawn points. I'm not quite sure about this, so I'm very, very interested how this will play out on the live server. But this doesn't action, actually really address the problem of last man running. So in RRB, we actually have here a solution to the problem. In RRB, battles on average tend to last somewhere between 15 and 20, 25 minutes if it's a long battle. Um, and I think there is a very simple solution that additional objectives appear. They are very easy to, cl to clear, like, you know, strafing here some, um, you know, three spots with um, randomly appearing vehicles. You, every plane in the game can destroy them, even with a light machine gun fire. And then you actually bleed down the enemy's tickets. If this is now somewhat a possibility, for um, tank RP or combined arms that has to be seen, but it's another idea. Um, so I think now we also have a problem with the uh, soft RP cap. Some people really uh, promise themselves too much to it. But what the head developer actually said, the longer gameplay, the higher rewards. No cap for um, RP of any kind. So that means what he also said, if um, so if you play a 10 minute battle, the income will be just half of what you get for a 20 minute battle. Um, just saying that if you win both and you get the same amount of actions per minute. And that is another problem. There is a limited amount of things that you can do in a battle. So you cannot cap a cap twice, can you? And if there is no enemy uh, team member going for that cap and at least decapping it, um, you just can't cap it. And if the last man is running and there is just one or two people left and they're just hiding, you know, you just waste time. And I think this is another factor that we have to address. So maybe make their um, an exponential um, increase of uh, civil lines and RP. So for instance, I mean not exponential with, you know, a very obvious uh, sign of, uh, um, <laughs> of gaining victory, uh, of gaining civil lines and RP, but let's say that if you play, um, if you get five kills, the reward to then stay in the battle for 10 minutes should be a bit lower than for 20 minutes, even though you got five kills. Because very often we have small maps late at night from my uh, point of living. And I think this is also something to discuss. So yeah, I think 1.83 will be the patch where the economics will change. FP and parts will be introduced the change at least before 1.83. Now, first of all, that is really quick. And I think that is really nice to see. However, I for myself have kind of a bit of taste um, on the fact that it was necessary to create such a, excuse the word, shitstorm to bring Gaijin to listen. Or at least um, I think they listen and they read a lot but very often they do not really think it's worth taking action and that the community had to be that furious and that persistent to make this, you know, necessary change. That was kind of, you know, in the future, I think it should be a bit easier. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want more. I don't want this. I want that and I want everything for free uh, and on top of this also a second free Abrams. No, I want that it is fair, that it's fun and that people stay with the game. I want people to enjoy this game and then to spend their money. And that then leads to the game becoming more and more popular, giving it a much longer lifetime where everybody profits from it. And I know this might again sound like um, very idealistic, somewhat unrealistic, but if you never try, if you never 
go for it, then uh, you just only have yourself to blame. So I think um, there are good parts, there are better parts in this video than I kind of expected. But honestly, for what we could have gotten, um, it's a fair compromise, okay? Three parts in FPE uh, were never really, you know, realistic. But that we see some changes, a bit of relief from the high tier grind, in conjunction with then also getting uh, faster access to some of the uh, other modifications due to the fact that you can research uh, FPE after researching only one tier one modification or two. I think that is the big change um, of this video, of this discussion. And yeah, thank you Gaijin for listening to the community and responding like that from an official standpoint. I know that has been a lot of rambling and in the background you could see the char 25t with some of the battles that I played with it where I was completely stuck and it was not a pleasure. Some of those scenes you have already seen in uh, my video and first impressions of the tank and yeah it's a massive uh, difference um, if you play the tank stock or fully upgraded although the two um, scenes that I show were kind of extreme cases but I think it was very nice to visualize it. That's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, give it a subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this entire discussion and its uh, seemingly positive outcome and on which side you stand, what would you have proposed and yeah I know I'm not the first one to respond, it has taken me a few days to get to it, but a lot of stuff has come, you know, Death server, real life, this discussion. So um, yeah, that's the video for today, and we'll see each other in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.